like your marriage is on cruise control or things are too serious or even boring. On today's episode, Liz and I have a great discussion about the importance of prioritizing fun in your relationship, from laughing at the little things and making time for fun date nights, to sharing silly memes, to planning and talking about your next fun getaway. Couples who laugh and play together are more likely to stay together. Amberly Lambertson is a certified family life educator with a passion for marriage relationships. Amberly received her bachelor's degree in family studies and her master's of education with an emphasis in family life education. Through her work as a marriage educator, Amberly shares creative date night solutions, tips for increased emotional and physical intimacy, ideas for having more fun, and practical ways couples can make time for their marriage every day. Amberly helps couples make time to build and enjoy their marriage relationship every single day throughout every stage of life. We hope you enjoy the show. Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Stronger Marriage Connection podcast. I'm Dr. Dave here at Utah State University alongside Dr. Liz Hale, our licensed clinical psychologist and family therapist. Hey, we are bringing you the best research and resources, tips and tools to help you create the marriage of your dreams. All right. Today, I'm super excited about our discussion with a good friend who is doing amazing work helping couples strengthen their marriage connection. We're going to be talking about how to make your marriage fun again. She's a relationship expert. She's an author, family life educator, podcaster, good friend, and a huge advocate for the Utah Marriage Commission, which all this is this is about bringing you resources. Welcome to the Stronger Marriage Connection podcast, Amberly Lambertson. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm excited to chat with both of you today. We are so happy to have you. So excited, Amberly. Thanks for uh, for joining us. Hey, let's let's start things off with a little bit of, of uh, background, a little bit about you and your background. Discuss your your why for helping couples strengthen their marriage connection. Why why did you jump into this? Um, I kind of stumbled into the family studies field kind of on accident. Um. I decided to go back and get my associates after working for a couple of years in the salon. I have my um, cosmetology license and I was looking for classes that were interesting to me that I could take online. And I realized a lot of them were in the family studies field. And then I started looking at the family studies field and said, oh, I've always wanted to be a music therapist. And that's an option for a master's for that. And so I didn't go into this planning to be anything to do with relationships. Um, I had knowledge of extension and things like that. And I always have been a hopeless romantic and have loved relationships. And so when I got into my program, my bachelor's in family studies, the first day in class, there's like an intro to family studies seminar. And someone said, I want to be a marriage educator. And I was like, hold on, tell me more about this. I like, I like this idea. And so I started looking into it more and I found my passion there. And so I just love the fun side of the preventative side. Um, I think I think both are valuable, but for me, I love that preventative side of relationship education and just teaching couples how to create that strong connection like we've talked about. And my my personal mission with it is helping couples make their marriage a priority throughout every stage of life so that when they get to the end of their, you know, parenting journey or whatever that looks like, that they still have that relationship to enjoy. And not just then, but through their entire marriage. So. That is just a, a great mission of helping couples prioritize their relationship. Because everywhere we go, Emily, it seems, and Dave too, that we're just so darn super busy, right? You ask someone how they're doing, and it's like, oh, I'm so busy. And it's, it's so important anyway for couples to prioritize fun. And that's, I think, your middle name, Amberly. Everything about you is just fun. Given how busy those of us are, how do we ever begin to prioritize fun? What are your suggestions, please? Yeah, I do think that's one of the things that kind of falls to the back burner, falls to the wayside when we're busy. We're busy raising kids. We're busy. I mean, my own personal experience right now, my husband's going to school. We're both working. Um, I was going to school at one point. We're running businesses, all those things that we have going on that fun kind of takes a backseat. And so yep. we don't have time for fun, right? We don't have time. Yeah. <laughs> and so it doesn't take tons of time. It doesn't. And I think when I tell people like, make your marriage a priority, they think I have to spend hours every single day with my spouse. 
like we may have when we were dating. And the idea is to have that fun and that connection that you had when you were dating, but even better because you've been together for longer, experienced more together. Um, just finding those little moments and being intentional with them to create that fun and to create that connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm really, I'm, I totally agree. I really feel like that most people, most couples, they don't really understand how important this topic is that we're talking about today. When, when asked how, how things are going in addition to busy, I often hear fine. You know, th things are fine. Yeah, we're fine. And I don't think that fine is the same as fun, right? I love the idea of, of taking your marriage from fine to fun. What does fun look like in a marriage? What, what is a, a fun marriage? I always tell people to think back to when they were dating. I don't know anyone who says that they started dating their person because they were boring. Like we, they were fun being bored together. Like we could sit and watch paint dry together and we'd have the grandest old time. Right. Like, but I think it's because you enjoyed being together and part of that enjoyment, it comes from having shared interests, shared values, shared goals, but also just sharing enjoyment in life that you can be with them doing anything and it's fun. And so thinking back to what your relationship looked like, it might not be the exact same things that you do now, but what did we do for fun and how can that trans or transpose to now in our relationship? Or what did we think would be fun when we got older? You know, um, I was telling my husband, we were watching a movie, I think, and they had a date night car, a car that they just drove for date night. And I was like, <laughs> I want a date night car. Like, that's a good idea. That might not be something that we can do now, but it can be a piece of that fun for us that like, okay, we have a car that we take out when it's just the two of us. The kids don't ride in it. There's no goldfish crunched up in the back or I saw multiple pairs of socks in the back of my car today. Like that's the one we took to date night last week. The, it's not like that. It's a fun. It has the music that we love. We're doing something we enjoy together. So what is at the core of who you are as a couple? Not just like I said, those shared values, morals, goals for life, but that shared enjoyment that you have together. It's really a sweet idea. I've never really felt very fun. You know, I'm, I'm pretty serious, I would say, and I have really tried to make it kind of a life goal in this in my marriage to at least once a day, either text something funny to my husband or come home and share a funny story, just because it's, it's, I kind of want to show up that way. I, I, I've really had to make it an effort, though, because it doesn't necessarily come natural. <laughs> you know what I mean? Liz, I think you should get Ben a fun car. Just be like, this is the car for fun. Right? <laughs> I, I thought that was such a great idea. Cute. Yeah. That's a cute movie idea. I like that. How, so what about when life is kind of heavy and serious? How do you still prioritize fun, Amberly? do you think? Um, I share this experience a lot. We had a child in the NICU, and it's been seven and a half years. It's so far back, but it's a time in our lives when I remember it being so heavy, and every day was unknown, and every day could be like, all of a sudden we've taken five steps back and we're not going home any sooner, or they have this medical issue and it gets so heavy. But that's also a time when I remember having the most fun with my husband, we would sit and they have like some educational videos you have to watch. And not that we took them like lighthearted, but some of them were just kind of funny. They were old school and we were laughing through them. We were joking with the nurses. We were taking time to go watch an episode of psych in our little room down the hall while our baby was napping we were finding those moments to have fun together and it felt like fun can be easy to find when life is light when there's not a lot weighing on you but i think it's almost not more important um it's well i would maybe say more important that that's the time when you really have to search for fun and so it's Going on those things that you know are funny to you. Scrolling through, I know everyone loves to scroll reels, right? Like my husband's a meme guy. I joke that memes are his love language, that if you send him a meme, he has multiple text conversations with people that they just speak in memes. There's no real text in there. It's um, but I know that if I send him a funny meme or if we share a joke or we share something our kid said and um but that's the fun, the fun side of life. And we laughed together a lot during that time when we were in the NICU. And 
I remember laughing and I'm like, like life doesn't feel as heavy now. It is heavy in different ways, but I don't feel like we laughed as much during that time How can, or during this time as we did then. How can we bring that fun back? And in our own way, Liz, like I think you were saying, like, I don't feel fun. I believe you're fun. Maybe your fun doesn't look like everyone else's fun. My fun does not include my child and I were talking about jumping out of an airplane this weekend. And she said, why would you do that? And I said, some people think it's really fun. And so I had her ask grandma who jumped out of an airplane. Why is that fun for you? I prefer to keep my feet on the ground, you know. Um, so finding your own style of fun and what's going to work and not feeling bad if you are having mm -hmm. fun when life is hard. Mm -hmm. Not You know, when you were in the NICU, and how is your baby today, by the way? Well, she's good. She's, are they seven? She's seven and a half. She's a wild, crazy. She's great. <laughs> Oh, I'm so happy for you. Did life kind of stop for the two of you? Do you suppose that's why you were able to to bring the lightness because you were there together? Did I do feel, yeah, at that time in life, there were, we had very solid priorities. My husband went to work. We both spent time with our toddler at home. We both spent time with our child in the NICU and we both spent time with each other. And it did. And sometimes life just continues on and you don't have that like opportunity to pause, but still finding time for fun. And it might be making, hey, from seven to eight tonight, we're going to set everything else aside and we're just going to have fun together. The rest of life takes his backseat and we're going to have fun together. So. Nice. <laughs> yeah. However that looks, good for you. Yeah, it's interesting, uh, Amberly. I'm just thinking about the, <laughs> on Mondays, right? Monday memes is when I, I share, you know, parenting and marriage memes and it's just funny that the lighter side, interesting Part of this, Amberly, is as I just surveyed on uh, many of the social media followers and podcast followers that follow me, and I, I asked them, what, is, what do you like? And um, it's interesting how many actually said, I look forward to the mundane memes. I could be stressed or my parenting, and I see one of those, it makes me smile, and I'll share it with my husband, and together we will we'll share a laugh, or they'll say, you know, my, my day is just long and Drudgery, but I'll see your memes, and then it just makes me realize, oh my goodness, I can't take life too seriously. So, so you're right. I mean, making time to smile and laugh. I mean, it releases these chemicals within our our brains and our bodies that are that are needed, aren't they? Mm hmm. A hundred percent. I look forward to those memes too. <laughs> ah. um, okay. Now, Amber, I'm I'm thinking that there are some some listeners right now who may be feeling this kind of this this guilt trip hole, and they're like my marriage is, is boring or man, we're boring. We don't do anything. And I hope that people will not go there because then that can often turn to blaming like, Oh my husband, he's not fun anymore. Or, you know, those, that type of thing. So I, I hope that this is more of a um, inspiration, right? That people will hear this and say, what, what can I do? You know, what can I do to bring back more of the, the fun, the, the see the lighter side of, of life. If, if people are stuck, let's say that they're in a relationship I call it relationship rut right now. How do they make it a regular part of their of their marriage and get out of that relationship rut? I do think you can have a conversation about it for one. And you talked about not blaming and saying like, hey, I do you remember this time when we would laugh together? Do you remember this fun memory we had? Like, I miss doing that as much. What would, can we do to bring that back to our marriage? And whether or not you have that conversation, sitting down and deciding like, what am I going to do? to bring that fun to my marriage. For me, it would look like I'm going to find a bunch of memes and I'm going to schedule them on my phone to go out with my husband during his lunch break every day. And I'm going to see at the end of the day, we always send each other or we always show each other like the reels. I love to just be like, let me show you these things. And sometimes I'm the only one laughing. It's like, this, that is not as funny as you think it is, but I know he <laughs> thinks it's funny, right? Like, <laughs> Just enjoy <laughs> Um, it, it can be as simple as we always went on walks together when we were first dating and first married late at night. We can't do that as much. Can't leave the seven and nine year old home by themselves quite yet. Um, I also don't know if that would work out well. My house might explode. It's okay. Um, but those fun things, what are those fun things you did together? Maybe it's picking up a new hobby together. Um, I recently learned my parents dance. I, I'm I'm 35 years old. They've been married for 36, going on 37 years. I had never seen them dance together. And a few years ago at my brother's wedding, they 
whipped it out on the dance floor and all of us were like, what? So I started sharing with them. Hey, look, there's this fun dance class that's like five bucks. You can go once a month and learn how to dance and then dance together. Like, here's some fun things you can do together. We bought them and these are just, you know, examples. We bought them a National Parks Pass for Christmas um, because my dad could get the like lifetime one as a senior. And now they go exploring national parks together. They're going just next month to explore a national park together. Um, but what can you do now? So for me, it doesn't look like going and exploring a national park. That actually would not be as much fun for me. <laughs> um, but we go try a new restaurant together. We check out a movie together and laugh through a movie. Sometimes it's rewatching a favorite episode that we've been talking about of our favorite Parks and Rec or The Office. Like um, listening to podcasts together can be fun. Um, I love to listen to these marriage podcasts, yours and a few others, and then sharing pieces of it with my husband. But listening to, uh, you know, whatever, there's a podcast for everything, whatever looks fun to you. Just pulling out what has been fun in the past, what has sounded fun, what have we talked about doing, what's something that could be fun to do together and and doing that together. Yeah, I you bring that up, Amber, early, and, and I, I can't help but... Um laugh and smile because my wife and I, we just recent, uh, recently went on a cruise with my parents um, and uh, my siblings. And so I have five siblings and my parents and their spouses and we went on a cruise and just had so much fun. One of the nights was this silent disco. I don't know if you've ever had that where you put on the headphones and you're the only ones who can hear the song. And we requested Ice Ice Baby just because that, that song, you know, back to high school days and stuff, it was just fun. We put on these and we danced and had so much fun, fun together. But, and I want to point out that that is not for everybody, right? I had some siblings that are like, that is not fun for me. I want to sit down here and watch you guys do that. So it's important to tailor whatever it is, whatever is, is fun, that is exciting, that makes you smile, that makes you laugh, that, that you enjoy yourself, whether that's putt, putt, mini golf, or you're going out, um, yeah, to the lake or, or a getaway, whatever that is. We'll be right back after this brief message. And we're back. Well, let's dive right in. Um, so how do you approach that? Can come back to that conversation. You talked about it a little bit. Um, how, do, how does one go over, instead of saying, honey, you know what? I listened to this podcast and I decided that we're really boring. You know, I don't want people to, I don't want people to say that. I'm guessing that's probably not the best approach to this conversation to bring that up. Is there a better way to, to start this conversation um, about wanting to have more, more fun, more, more excitement uh, in your marriage? Yeah. I think it can be something like life has felt so serious lately. Like, just want to lighten our load. What can we do for fun this weekend? What sounds fun? Or, hey, I know you've always loved, um, as you were talking about putt putt, I was thinking my husband loves to go to top golf. I look like a complete fool when I'm at top golf. I can never, but those are like things that my husband enjoys that might not be my absolute favorite, but I enjoy watching him have fun and enjoy watching him laugh at me, not hitting it even past the net sometimes. <laughs> well, um, but like you said, your own style of fun or, hey, remember when we used to have season, this is my own personal experience too, when we used to have season passes or tickets to that sporting event or that local theater or whatever, they have this game coming up or they have this show coming up. Do you want to go see it together? This could be so fun. Um, something like, hey, I saw this movie is on Netflix or it just was released in theaters or we can go get it from the red box. Like, can we plan a time to do that together? It would be so fun. Um, or even reminiscing, do you remember in the beginning of our relationship when we did this one thing together and that was so fun? Can we do that again? And so it's not saying, I feel like we're boring or I feel like our life is just, I don't know, a down in the depths, party pooper, whatever you want to call it. But like, hey, I was thinking about this time we had fun or I was thinking about this thing you've always wanted to do or we've talked about going to try this ice cream shop and just creating those opportunities for fun. That's, I would love to do this with you, not, we've been failing at this. And like you said, swallowing in that rut because it doesn't make it fun. It almost makes it drudgery to do that fun thing. Like, 
doing this fun thing because you said I'm boring. Um, and it's not going to be as connecting or fun for either of you. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I can see that even having, I, I love the, like, these little fun m- moments and let's do this, let's do this. I also think there's some value to, you know, scheduling something, Hey, you know, April or spring break, something to look forward to that is fun. Now people with different budgets, right. It may not be a cruise, but it may just be a, a drive to Bear Lake or something, right. That is just something that we can plan for. I know the research suggests that when you have this anticipation, this excitement is almost as much fun as the activity itself. Because let's be honest, when we went to Disneyland last time, it, just, it rained for three days and it wasn't as much fun. But planning and looking forward to something was so was 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 part of the fun of mm-hmm. planning. Yeah, I think, like you said, it could be like, hey, it's our 10 year anniversary in five years. Let's plan and start working for it. And you're planning it, right? It could be spring break is in, I think it's in a month and hopefully it's spring for spring break. <laughs> but let's go do this with the family or it's our anniversary this summer. What can we do for our anniversary weekend? But it can be as simple as every Wednesday, our favorite cold case podcast comes out and we listen to, I feel like everyone, they're not my choice, but we have listened to a few. Everyone loves to listen to like the true crime podcasts, right? We look forward to putting the kids to bed and sitting down. It could be, hey, I bought this, we did this once. Um, Reese's has like creamy Reese's, regular Reese's, and crunchy Reese's. My husband loves Reese's. Reese's are good. And I picked up one of each from the store and I sent him a picture and I said, hey, tonight after the kids go in bed, we're taste testing these and finding our favorite. And it was just something to look forward to. I think a lot of people want like spontaneity. Um, We hear that a lot with physical intimacy, but even with fun, like that spontaneous fun isn't the same as it was. But like you said, the anticipating and planning it is make it happen more than expecting it to be spontaneous is. And it's the... Yeah, it's the anticipation, the looking forward to it, the planning for it that makes it almost more exciting and more fun. And then you're excited to sit down together and put your headphones on and listen to a podcast or go on that 10 hour road trip to what it's like 12 hours to California, maybe from here to Disneyland. And you've got all these fun things planned for while you're on the road trip. And yeah, like you said, it can be as simple as after the kids go to bed or in five years or next month or this weekend, let's go try this restaurant. So definitely talking about it and planning ahead. Big. Yeah. Mm. The, the day in the day in day in day out fun that you had mentioned earlier, it really is a bit of an attitude, isn't it? Yes. What do you think? Emily? It's fun and attitude yeah. where it may not be something okay. planned. Maybe things are just so busy that the best I can do is be on a smile campaign and be so happy to see my husband when he comes in and maybe something happens, funny happens over dinner or, you know, he gets pasta or, or tomato sauce on his nose and I go kiss it off or something. I mean, how much is fun and attitude? Yeah. I think about my husband, I used to say like, he can make me laugh even when I'm in the worst mood. And sometimes I just need him to listen and let me be in that mood. Right. But being willing, sometimes I'm in a mood where I'm like, don't bother me. And I'm not willing to turn around and have the dance party with him or laugh at the joke that he's sharing with me. Or I'm like, I'm just not in the mood. Can you be in the mood? Can you? And one of my tips I share um, a lot is being willing to laugh with the other person and laugh at them and laughing. Um, I mentioned to my husband, will watch, I'll, I'll show him a reel that I think is really funny, you know, a video or something. And he's like, it's not as funny as you think it is. <laughs> and I'm like, but it is funny, but he can laugh with me or laugh at me or yeah. let me enjoy it and enjoy it with me. So it is an attitude that are you willing to step away from the seriousness of life and have fun? And sometimes there is a time and a place. If I came down while my husband was doing his finals last a weekend, two weekends ago and was like, let me show you this reel. Let me show you this reel. Let me show you this reel. He, it wasn't a time and a place for fun, but I could send them to him to break up that time or, Hey, we're going to go do this for fun afterwards. And knowing we have that, but a lot of it is that attitude and being willing to laugh when life doesn't go. I think people say you have to laugh so you don't cry. And I think that can be powerful that like life doesn't go as planned, but we laugh when our kids start a fire in our microwave or 
my laugh when our basement floods for the third time or, you know, that it's not funny, but we'll laugh about it someday. Why not laugh about it now? And just enjoy that lighter side of life while still um, saving and making space and holding space for the seriousness of different situations. Yeah. So making time for fun. And you also speak a, a bit about maybe you just have a tidbit for us. Um, and really about the physical, about intimacy. Yeah, I think I hear this a lot that um, sex is the fun for adults, which I think can be true. But I also think that fun happens outside of the bedroom and aside from physical connection. Um, but making that time to just connect with each other and to have that fun together. And um, I follow a couple who says they make out every single night with no expectation of it being anything else and it can be or it might not be but they just connect they have fun they hug they dance they find those ways to connect um again in fun ways i love that they make out every single night and come come what may right come what yes. may <laughs> i think that's pretty great tell us about your resources your social media your podcast good for you and other things you offer Emily. where can people find you and learn more yeah. So my website is a prioritized marriage and I'm at a prioritized marriage on most social media and uh, all social media. And then my podcast is called prioritize your marriage. So it's giving couples ideas and ways that they can take kind of like we've talked about these tangible things that they can take and apply a concept um, and prioritize their own marriage. And whether it's prioritizing fun or prioritizing intimacy or prioritizing having those hard conversations. So. I talk a lot about similar things we've talked about today, like how are you connecting and creating fun and how is that fun going to help you connect deeper in the other areas of your life? And that's where you can find me. Awesome. And we'll put that in our, in our show notes as well for our, our listeners to, to easily find you and follow you. Uh, Emily, I know I've been following you for years and love the, the, the stuff that you, that you uh, put out. I think it is, it's very helpful, very useful. Um, so thank you for doing that. Hey, Amberly, we like to ask um, all of our, our list or our guests, a, a couple questions. The first one of these is in your mind, what is the key to a stronger marriage connection? For me, it's making time to be intentional every single day, taking some opportunity to intentionally connect every single day. Um, it could be sharing a song you love. It could be standing and hugging in the kitchen. It could be as simple as doing the dishes together. You know, we got to do the dishes. Let's talk and have fun while we do them rather than you clean one area and I clean another. Um, it could be going on a big date. It could be going to Disneyland or going on a cruise, but finding something intentional that you can do every single day to make time to connect with your spouse in an intentional and personal way, I think, beyond the business of life, whether that's household management or kids or whatever that looks like. Set aside that business and connect personally on a daily basis. Mm, love it. Yeah, love, love, love it. Um, another question for you. Of all the things we've talked about today, or if there is there a take home message, something that you want our listeners to remember? We call it our, our takeaway of the day. What would that be? There's so many. <laughs> I've thought about it. Um, I think just find one thing you can do today to have fun together. And it doesn't mean you have to laugh together, although I think fun and laughter are kind of, you know, tied together. What's one thing you can do this week or you can do today to have fun together and then do it again tomorrow? and find something new or find something old, whatever that is, just take an opportunity to have fun. And maybe it's like we talked about Liz, the attitude turning towards your spouse in the most moments when they're trying to have fun um, and setting aside that I'm not in the mood for this attitude and be in the mood for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah mm -hmm. that's great. Liz, what about you? What's your takeaway of the day? Well, I'm kind of gathering that, uh, and there's no one I'd rather laugh with than my husband, right? I love laughing with him. One of my favorite people to laugh with. And I really want it to continue to be for him that safe harbor where, where that laughter and that fun is really the relief we can bring our partner, isn't it? That's, that's how I want to show up with him. Uh, Dave, what about you? What's your favorite takeaway of their time with Amberly? Yeah, you know, like, like most things, it takes, and I really mentioned it, it takes this intentionality. 
really to make it. She, I love her, her stuff. It's called a prioritize. You make it a priority in your relationship. If you don't, then you, you naturally, it's this natural float to isolation that you naturally will drift apart. So couples who are intentionally creating the fun, whether it's spontaneous or let's plan something, but those are the couples who I think will, will thrive rather than just trying to survive in their, in their marriages and their relationships, it's this intentionality. So I, I love that. And really about making that an intention. If this is what's most important, then we're going to give this the attention that it needs. And sometimes you just got to be able to, to laugh, find the lighter side uh, of things. Don't take yourself or your life too seriously because it's meant to, to be enjoyed, to, to have fun, uh, even the, the pleasure, um, fun in your relationship. And so I think that's, that's key for relationships. That's a, a takeaway that I have um, today. Amberly, any, any other thoughts, any uh, closing advice or, or thoughts that you have on this topic? No, just I think, think about what's been fun for you. Think about what is fun. Think about those moments when you do have fun together and make more of that. Mm, yeah, love it. it as you mentioned that, I might add one more idea. It just popped into my head because you mentioned that. And that's maybe spend some time on your phones together, on your phones, just going through your pictures. It's, you know, just kind of, hey, let's go back this, this past year. And you see moments and you can kind of relive. Oh, man, remember, remember when we did this or, or did that or went here or when that. I think it's important to relive the fun almost kind of backwards as well as forward thinking. But I don't know, thoughts on that as far as kind of scrolling together, you know, on phones and, and looking at fun things. I love that idea. Yeah. Yeah. It's just something reminiscing. That, uh, yeah. Reminiscing Liz, I think is, is important uh, as well. So Emily, thank you so much for making time to, uh, to talk to us today about an important topic, putting the fun back into your marriage. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Thanks for having me. All right, friends, that does it for us for another episode of Stronger Marriage Connection. Thanks for joining us and tuning in. We'll see you next time. And remember, it's the small things that create a stronger marriage connection. Take care now. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, do us a favor and take a few minutes to subscribe to our podcast and the Utah Marriage Commission YouTube channel, where you can watch this and every episode of the show. When you hit the like button and leave a comment, your feedback helps us improve the show. And don't forget to share this episode with a friend. You can also follow and connect with us on Instagram at Stronger Marriage Life and on Facebook at Stronger Marriage. Be sure to share with us what topics you want us to explore or what you loved about today's episode. If you want even more resources to improve your relationship connection, visit our website at StrongerMarriage.org where you'll find free workshops, webinars, relationship surveys, and more. Each episode of Stronger Marriage Connection is hosted and sponsored by the Utah Marriage Commission at Utah State University. And finally, a big thanks to our producers Rex Polanis and Alexis Alcott and the team at Utah State University. And you, our audience, you make this show possible.